Hey, what's up? Um, well, uh, I, you know, yesterday I was talking about, um, no powerlessness. I was just updating, really. Um, I wanted to talk about using dreams. Aren't they a bitch? Um, last night was the first night that I didn't have a using dream. Very first night. Kind of crazy, because I, when I was in rehab, I had the realest dreams. Like, I woke up in rehab. My grandmother's been dead for quite some time. Seven years. And at this time, she'd been dead for six years. And in rehab, June, July 2011, I was in rehab, and I had a dream that she wrote me a check for $68. And I went and bought dope with it, put it in my little, I had a bowl, you know, those little bowl carrier things. Um, I had my shoot 'em up kit inside that. And I hadn't had that thing. I used to use it for that. I don't know what happened to it. But I didn't use it anymore. But, um, uh... I woke up in my bed in rehab, went straight to the closet where I hid it at in my dream, and I searched, and I searched, and I searched. And then there was another one when I lived in Oxford House. <laughs> I had a bottle of Xanaxes. This is me. Something I do. Uh, the bottle got wet, so I just mixed, like, the inside of the bottle got wet and all the pills got wet. So I mixed it up, and I drank it. And I would do that in real life. But I got so fucked up in my dream that it satisfied my cravings. But this week, I've been clean since, not this past Sunday, but last Sunday. And I've been, I mean, detoxing, you know, the first three days. Which I had some Tramadol and... It helped a lot, like, it helped so much. Um, I don't know why Trimadol takes your witch rolls away, but it does. It's a non-narcotic pain pill. It must mess with the same receptors with a different, I don't know, but, anyways, uh, that, <sighs> every night I dreamed that I mean, they were crazy dreams. Crazy dreams. And all I could do the next day was think about how bad I wanted to get high. And yesterday and last night and this morning, whatever, this was the first 24 hours that... I haven't constantly thought about a drug. Um, I'm doing this whole step one, and it's not through AA. I'm doing it through something else, and it's different. It's the same, but it's different. Um, you know, step one is powerlessness, and I mean, I think that's your step one for anything, but... Um, I am powerless over these cravings. I am powerless over all of this. And reading the Bible, and I don't know if I'm translating it correctly or not, but um, it's like you're not in control of your sinful ways. And kind of in a reality, the devil is controlling you. I mean, I, it's no lie that, I mean, the devil, I swear, I don't, I don't, it's not my imagination. I have heard his voice. And I have heard him tell me that he will give me everything I want. And I've heard it so many times. And it's like always when I'm in the shower, he likes to get me when I'm naked nasty fucker <laughs> but 
it's it's weird because you know I know I know I'm powerless over everything. I'm powerless over my whole entire life. I'm just ready to get my recovery started more than just this week thing because you know I was in rehab for 30 days and that was the hardest 30 days of my life it was the hardest 30 days of my life and you know I went through my book that not the one I read in rehab I'm fixing to do that again but I went through my step book from the first time that I attempted to go through the steps and I got to step five in AA and I'm reading it and my sponsor had me write down every memory I ever had which didn't make any sense to me at the time but I'm reading them I'm reading my memories now and I've had a fucked up ass life but then I come to realize that I am not I've got to now with these steps I know that nasty motherfucker that was on the street that gutter bitch who pulled tricks lie steal not steal fuck you over really take your money in front of your face you know um rob that that desperate person that was so desperate to be not homeless so desperate to feel God again um I remember I, I had to remember that person today and that person is still in me but at the same time she's not now it's I don't even know what it is because you know last night at this meeting I brought up powerlessness and how I told you in my blog I brought up powerlessness and how um I know it here but I can't feel it here and then um I got chastised the whole meeting I needed that because these people are looking at me and they're saying you're not gonna be cute you'll end up homeless you'll end up getting beat if you don't stop now and I'm just I've been that and it's a freaking I thank you for thinking that I had never been that you take one look at me and you think I've never hit bottom but little do you know I've been there and I'm not going back and that keeps me afloat I'm a chronic relapser as you guys know and this guy in his meeting tonight was like thank you for the relapsers because you know I got six months wait till he hits nine months he's gonna go crazy <laughs> nine months ain't easy it was easy for me last time but when I went to rehab I completely I got saved again and I, I did. I let go. And I let God. And this time, something's keeping me from letting go. Um, I don't know what it is. I swear to y'all, ever since I've had this car, <laughs> this has not been easy. I, I want to get rid of my car. And it just associated. It. it just feels like, it just feels evil. <laughs> So, can y'all hear him snoring? I know last night I tried to show you guys him and I completely missed it, but let's see. Hey, yeah, there's my little baby. He's not a little baby no more, but he deserves more than this stupid air mattress. And look, I'm selfish as hell. I took the bed. <laughs> Oh, I'm fucking horrible. I'm horrible. Um, and then I realized I am too materialistic. Uh, a long time ago, when I was homeless, when I had nothing, there was this girl, her name's Samantha Godfrey. 
I don't care. I'll put your name out there. Um, and um, we grew up together um, here in Beckley. And uh, we ran into one another. And she changed her name to Raven and whatever. And like two or three weeks after I've been seeing her around all my friends up in Charlotte, I just finally looked at her and I'm like, yo, your name ain't Raven. But long story short, she brought me up here because I lived up here and I went down there to handle some business and I needed to get back up here. And she brought me back up here and the whole way she was drinking those um, tilt things, the blueberry ones. And um, I drank somewhat, but I wasn't drinking that much. And uh, we went to the bar. I wasn't drunk because she was so fucking trashed. She was standing on a bar. She was acting a fool. It was crazy. She got us kicked out. Well, in the car, it was snowing like hell, icy as shit. And she slapped me in the face twice. And I looked at her and I told her, I said, you slap me in the face one more fucking time and I will beat your ass. But she kept calling me materialistic. I grew up in a decent house. I, I had everything I wanted and it wasn't because I was spoiled. It was makeup gifts from my mom and my dad. Really from my dad. It was, I'm going to give you these nice clothes because your mom treats you this way. I'm going to give you this cell phone because your mom did this. I mean, everything nice that I got. All the Tommy Hilfiger clothes. All my Timberlands. All my expensive perfumes. Uh, my pager, my cell phone, those things all came from pity gifts because my mom and dad didn't get along. My mom couldn't stand me. I'm the youngest out of four, plus I have a nephew who's only eight years younger than I am. And, you know, there was Christmases where my mom didn't buy me anything but a pack of underwear. That's the Christmas I got a cell phone. Um, you remember those Nokias, those big Nokias? When they first came out with all the bright colors, I got the bright yellow one. Um, she called me materialistic. And at this time, I had nothing. I mean, I had nothing. And I'm like looking at her like, what the fuck are you talking about? Well, not too long ago, my boyfriend called me materialistic. Even though we were talking of fighting over cigarettes. <laughs> and I was talking about how I needed cigarettes and I needed, you know, those things. He was like, you're too materialistic. And then the night in the meeting, I was like, you know, I'm, even though I'm not homeless, I am not striving for a better job, a better car, and a better house. <laughs> and then this guy was like, this program gave me more than all the materialistic things. And it hit me. Oh my God. I am materialistic. Even though I don't have much. That's a fucking lie. <laughs> I went from having one bag of clothes to having a 12 foot closet full. I've gotten rid of my clothes five times in the last six months. A lot of clothes. I got